Hi everyone, in this video, I will talk about RF power and voltage measurements. At RF frequency, that is in the range of megahertz to gigahertz, the conventional voltmeters, power meters, ammeters become useless to make measurements of a signal at these frequencies. So we have a different set of devices to make measurements at these frequencies. The basic idea is the RF frequency that is nothing but an AC signal is rectified to a DC signal and we measure this DC signal thus we obtain various parameters like power, voltage and current. So the rectification process as you all know is done using diodes but at the RF frequencies the normal diodes do not function. So we have specialized diodes like the short key barrier diode and the point contact diode which help us to rectify an RF frequency signal. Here we have an RF millivolt meter which is a device that can be used to measure voltage and power. Since the voltage that we receive after rectification will be a DC voltage and it will be of a very low amplitude that is in the millivolt range. So we have an amplifier over here that will amplify a DC voltage and then a meter that will read the reading. Now depending on the type of probe measurements differ. The circuit that you see here is nothing but the extension of ranges circuit as we all know it. So you can change the range of your meter as you want. Now as I had said depending on the probe you can make a measurement. Now if the probe is like this then the measurement that you can make is voltage and if the probe is like this you can make a power measurement. Voltage measurements are made with relatively high impedance as you can observe 1 kilo ohm here power measurement 50 ohm. As you can observe we have a short key diode here that help that aids in the rectification process. This is one way of measuring the voltage and power. The power measurement can be made in the range of nanowatt here. Besides this, there are other methods of measuring power. The absorption power meters are the most used. In these absorption type of power meters, there is a component that absorbs power and then we make uh, measurements depending on the power absorbed by this element. A test setup is shown here. We have an RF source, an attenuator, circulator, direction coupler, device under test. This is the device that's going to absorb our power. And then this is just a line term that completes the circuit. The RF source gives the power, okay, or the RF signal. Attenuator um, makes that signal suitable for our circuit. A circulator here acts as an isolator which uh, rejects any reflections from any of these devices towards the source. A directional coupler over here helps measure the input power to the device and a directional coupler over here helps measure the output device. I'm sorry, the output power from the device. So here Pi is the input power to the device. This is going to dissipate some power. Let's uh, call it as Pd and there is going to be some output power that is P0. Right. So I said this device is going to absorb some power. Based on that we are going to make a measurement of the 
power in the device right so what can we write pi is equal to p naught plus pd right so you can uh, find out the power that is absorbed by the device next we have voltmeter based measurements in this we have a standard resistor this resistor maintains its resistance value for a range of frequencies so we apply an input power here this is nothing but our rf power to this resistor and we have a voltmeter over here this voltmeter measures the voltage across the resistor rs and then power can be calculated as vs square by rs next we have a basic calorie meter power meter in this you have input power given to a resistor r and then you can take the output here this entire setting is an enclosed insulated uh, bath okay this has uh, a fluid inside it and you have a thermometer now when you're giving input power the resistor will uh, get heated up and so will the liquid so this uh, change in temperature is measured by the thermometer okay this resistor will also get uh, heated because of the heating of the liquid and so you get a dc output reading over here but what is important to us here is the thermometer reading power is measured based on the temperature difference here theta i is the temperature of the liquid when no input power is there and theta naught is the temperature of the liquid when you apply the input power so here r is the rate of flow of the coolant d is the density of the coolant and s is the specific heat of the coolant so you can directly measure power like this in this method it is uh, difficult to maintain this um, isolation temperature or environment and um, also we need to know the exact mass and specific heat of the calorimeter bath material so an alternative is the substitution power meter in this meter as you can observe there is one resistor and then again a bath so you have the fluid that gets heated up when there is an input power and the thermometer measures the temperature to which it gets heated up now a, a dc input is given and then the bath is made to attain the temperature as the previous temperature that is when a power input that is rf signal was given it would have measured some temperature now a dc input is also applied so that the same temperature or that equilibrium temperature is again obtained so power can be given again by the temperature difference next we have a comparison calorimeter power meter in this the input is given to a resistor it contains gauges here these are temperature sensitive gauges whose resistance varies when there is a change in temperature so when you're giving rf input to the resistor this gauge changes its resistance because it also gets heated up the entire setup that you're seeing here contains fluid and it is nothing but a heat exchanger so it ensures that the temperature at this side is same as the temperature as this side this is called as the input side and this is the compensation or the comparison head side okay if you observe that these two gauges are uh, part of a bridge circuit if you look at it like this and this side we have a transformer send it up transformer who's connected 
to an amplifier the amplifier is again connected to the comparison load so now in case of an imbalance an error voltage is generated by the amplifier and then this is given to the comparison load the comparison load then changes the resistance value here such that both the bridge is balanced and at the end when the bridge is balanced the temperature at this side is same as the temperature this side so the meter is so calibrated to give you the input load reading so in this method you are basically finding the input power whatever you are measuring the input power next you have the bolometer bridge circuit now you have a temperature sensitive resistor over here this is nothing but your bolometer bolometers are of two types they are barretters and thermistors barretters are metallic wires or metals okay which have a positive temperature coefficient that is you increase the temperature the temp the resistance of the component also increases or thermistors thermistors are semiconductor materials who have a negative temperature resist temperature coefficient so this component is uh, affected by the temperature the resistance of this component is affected by the temperature when a microwave input is given this gets heated up changes its temperature and say if the bridge is previously balanced now because of the applied input it gets imbalanced the meter is so calibrated to give you the powered reading okay next we have the simplified diagram of the modern bolometer in addition to the um, bridge circuit it has a resonance circuit over here and a variable dc voltage here so this circuit is such that when the bridge is this bridge is imbalanced then it oscillates at some frequency resonant frequency that is this much so when it is balanced you get the meter reader right so now when you give a microwave input here this changes its resistance causes an imbalance in the circuit this is measured here okay now previously you're going to give some known input voltage and you're going to measure the output of the differential amplifier now when you give the microwave input there's going to be a change here right which causes the change in the output of the differential amplifier the difference between the two values is measured by the meter to give you the appropriate power reading finally to sum up for uh, low power measurements that is from uh, 10 milliwatts to 10 no for less than 10 milliwatts you have um, bolometers that you can use for measurements for uh, powers in the range of 10 milliwatts to 10 watts you can use the comparison uh, uh, flow calorie meter and for powers greater than 10 watts you can use the calorie meter uh, power meters this is all about uh, the power measurements at rf frequencies i hope this was helpful thank you